What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome back to HQ. Welcome back to the channel. We are officially here. It is NFL kickoff Thursday. And like my man Pusha T said, if you ain't energized like the bunny for this fantasy football money, this ain't really for you. We got Dr. Morse of the Fantasy Doctors back in the house every Thursday. That's going to be the content schedule. We will film on Wednesday nights. We will post it on Thursday nights talking about the most prevalent injuries going on throughout fantasy football. There haven't been a ton of new injuries, but we're filming this on Monday, September 2nd. So throughout the week, you'll hear possibly some new updates on these guys. But we wanted to run through some of the injuries that have maybe taken place over the last week or so. Um, some of the more popular injuries that a lot of you guys ask to hear about on Twitter. So Dr. Morse, welcome back to the HQ. It's good to have you. And I'm ready to roll into the season and have you on every damn week. Let's go. We're ready. We ready. I see you came in uh, completely ready. You said you're going for the C-Mac look and you commented. Oh, yeah. We're going for the C-Mac look today. Hell yeah. Uh, I'm uh, hurricane prepared. Uh, it's about 70 miles off the coast of my house. I am in Treasure Coast and they keep showing that map and that thing keeps getting bigger and closer. And I just hopefully everybody in the Bahamas is doing all right. And hopefully everybody does all right here. Yeah, well, stay safe out there, baby. Um, I know you commented on my, my button-down shirt, and, I mean, it's, it's strictly business from here on out. So I wanted to act the part. Now, let's talk about the real business, the fantasy football injuries. We got a lot of wide receivers that people wanted to hear about. One in particular was a popular breakout candidate. We have Robbie Anderson of the New York Jets. Now, he suffered a calf strain about a week ago, I want to say. I think it was August 27th-ish, and he's been sitting out practice since now. Um, mid-season or mid-August muscle strains, hamstring, calf strains, basically put a player on my do not draft list. Um, this happens very late in the, in the off season, which mm -hmm. makes it very, very, very scary. So for those people who are thinking about taking him in the seventh or eighth round, for those people that already drafted him, what is the concern level? Because we know Derrick Henry had a calf strain and missed about a month of training camp. Obviously they're a little more cautious in training camp. Regular season is go time. They might try to push these guys. What's our thoughts on Robbie Anderson right now? Before the injury, I like his potential. I'm not a huge fan of his cornerback schedule. Uh, they don't expect him to be a monster offense, kind of middle of the pack. Uh, but he was expected to be the wide receiver one for the Jets. But when you add in a potential injury that can linger for three, four, five weeks, not exactly the best time to get an injury. There is really never a good time, but if this was at the beginning of season, a training camp, you probably would have missed most of it like Henry did. They don't really have that luxury. Best case scenario, this is a very, very mild calf strain and he plays in week one and does okay. More likely situation he plays, but he's got to be careful with it. If he tries to, so the importance of the gastroc, which is the, the main calf muscle, is that's for propulsion. That's your speed. That's your 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 separation tool. So if, if he doesn't have that separation tool because, A, he doesn't want to push it because he's afraid of re-injuring it and it's not ready yet, mm -hmm. or, B, he just doesn't feel like it's it, it's it's ready and he just feels like it's, it, it's, it's a ticking time bomb, he's not going to be very effective. He's going to get eaten up by, the, by, uh, by the, uh, even a mediocre DB – uh, I have to see who they're playing in week one, but I don't remember it being a pretty matchup. It's uh, it's the Bills. Yeah, so assuming yeah. White is playing, he's he is probably going to yeah. go on him, right? Yeah. Uh, the Bills have a very good defense, uh, very underrated. At least in week one, you got to be really careful here. I would probably put him in a flex spot, if anything. I would probably not put him in, in uh, as a wide receiver one or a wide receiver two because you're probably not going to get the points out of them you'd like. Uh, there are much better matchups this week, especially given uh, the injury. He is at high risk if you haven't drafted yet, or, or by this time you pretty much everybody's been drafted, but uh, yeah. this is probably not a guy I was reaching for or even drafting. So I, I pretty much have zero shares of Robbie Anderson. While I like his talent, I just I don't trust the, ca the, the calf, and I'm not a huge fan of the Jets' offense in general. I just I don't like Gase's the way he thinks. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that. Um, I mean, I like the talent as much as the next guy. And, uh, you know, it's easy to just say, hey, he could break out. He might not break out. But throwing this in the mix kind of throws him off my draft board. Um, so be weary. If you don't have to play him in week one, I wouldn't. You know, the calf injury combined with the fact that he's going to have to match up with Tredavious White, one of the best up-and-coming cornerbacks in the NFL right now. Let's move on to one of the best wide receivers in the NFL, and that's Keenan Allen, who's been dealing with this supposedly mild – ankle injury. Now, this happened, I believe, when it occurred, he had 24 or 25 full days of rest prior to when they kick off 
in week one. We haven't heard much about it, but from everything we know, it's kept behind the scenes, but minor. Um, and I see him tweeting and in good spirits, and it seems like it's not going to be a concern. However, I mean, he all, uh, obviously has a long injury history of missing a lot of time with random injuries. I don't think that's playing into this like minor ankle sprain or whatever it is, but maybe it puts him at more re-injury risk. I'm not really sure. He's someone that I'm actually low-key getting high on because a lot of the fantasy community has started to not particularly fade him, but they don't look at him as an elite option anymore where he mm -hmm. has been for the last few years. Now with Melvin Gordon very likely to sit out until week 10 or week 11 or whatever the case may be, it looks like a team that might go a lot more pass heavy. And Keenan Allen is, you know, he's what Phillip Rivers knows. So he is his first target. I don't care that Mike Williams is there. I don't care that Hunter Henry is back. He's been so solid with Keenan Allen for like four straight years now, you know, I'll bet the injury and stuff. Keenan Allen, what is your stance on this angle injury? And how do you feel about him from a fantasy perspective? dealing with this right now first off without looking at any numbers based on your thoughts from 2018 where did Allen go where did he finish in a full PPR league what ranking roughly uh full PPR I want to say he finished as the wide receiver 10 maybe 12, like 12? okay not bad very, now, very high. You know, you know let me interrupt you real quick. The, the problem that he's had the last couple of years and the reason people are so down on him is because he started off so slow and he always mm -hmm. has those monster second half of the years. If you look at how this year is about to play itself out, Melvin Gordon is going to miss the first half of the year, which means Keenan Allen is probably going to start off fast. And if he continues to finish fast, a lot of players fall off because they get tired, they have stamina issues, they have injury issues towards the second half of the year. Keenan Allen can put together two halves of the season. He could – be you know drafted again he's still young he's still in his prime 27 years old it's not like yeah. on his way down so he's someone I think could provide very very sneaky good value at the end of third I've even seen him drop into like the early fourth in some rounds and at that point it's an easy cop based on what we know the injury not being serious hopefully correct so the ankle injury the issue is we really don't know anything about this ankle injury okay. which is usually a good thing or it means it's very mild but mm -hmm. Maybe they're just keeping it from us. With that being said, if this is a mild ankle sprain, this is the most common injury in sports and uh, not a big deal. A couple days, he's back on it. Uh, within a week or two, he's back to pretty much relatively 100%. If it's a little bit more of a, a significant ankle sprain, these when these are guys are on crutches, these guys take a, a couple weeks off to even start putting any weight on it, and they take much longer. When we saw him on the sidelines, I don't know, maybe two weeks ago at the game, uh, he was more concerned about his uh, chain and his jewelry. It was like an alien or something. I don't know what it was. But. So I, it didn't look like he was favoring it. They didn't, I don't even think they talked about his ankle. So I get the impression that this is very uh, mild, very minor. Yes, Melvin Gordon's situation is really weird. <clears throat> Similar to Bell's, um, they already said that they are not uh, having any more contract discussions or extensions this year. Yeah. He is free to seek a trade, which uh, is probably not going to happen given how much he wants and, and how little people are willing to shell out for, for, this, for this position, yep. uh, except for maybe Zeke, and that's even a different situation. So I, I expect him to miss either a lot of games or just fold and play, uh, which, which one or the other. But yeah, he's probably going to miss think, stuff. Yeah, I think he misses a lot of time. There's no way a team trades capital for him and then signs him to a big extension. It's just there's no way it's going to happen, I don't think. The other part of it is Eckler is solid. Don't get me wrong. Eckler is solid. Jackson is solid. But they are not Melvin Gordon. Okay, mm -hmm. Melvin Gordon is really good. But the problem is he's been banged up the past couple of years. He never really finishes uh, all 16 games. And uh, as we know, a lot of these guys are kind of replaceable or at least semi-replaceable. Mm -hmm. So – now, for one more further thing that most people have kind of overlooked, two things actually. One, how dominant Hunter Henry is, okay, and how much he's going to play a role in this offense. Phillip Rivers loves his tight ends and throwing to them. Antonio Gates has been there for eternity. He's finally retiring for good, I believe, uh, and Gates is going to take over – or sorry, Henry's going to take over. He is likely – when you look at the data from a couple of years ago – he was elite, the, one of the top highest at, at uh, targets, or yards per target, like everything. You just look at the numbers and they're elite. Yeah. So I expect him to kind of pick up where he took off. We know that his eight and knees healthy. He played in the, uh, in the playoffs last year. So he's had plenty of time to, 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 to heal. Uh, Mike Will is, is solid. I don't know if he has that same type of TD uh, potential that he did last year. I, I see some regression and yeah. maybe, maybe Henry gets it. Maybe uh, Allen gets it. 
I like Allen where he's going. I think that's kind of a steal at that level. He's probably one of the last true uh, wide receiver ones, especially if you can get him that late. That's kind of, you know, Hilton no longer has that wide receiver one. Evans still has it, but he's been, been slept on a little bit. Godwin may have it, but you don't need to go that high to, 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 to get him. If, if I had a choice between Allen and Godwin, I love Godwin. But I'd still go Allen because he's safer and has yeah. probably higher upside. God, I think Godwin's Godwin's ceiling is Allen's floor for this year. Like, there's no way that Godwin out. There's no reason to take a guy like Godwin over Allen. But I'm I'm seeing Godwin. I've seen him go really damn early in some drafts mm-hmm. this year. But so yeah. so case in point, you're not worried about Keenan Allen's ankle. I mean, based on the signs of what we're seeing, I guess no. from social media. No, I mean he's not. If it's a low ankle sprain, he's at you know, pretty high risk for re-injury, but th- these are pretty mild. If he was on crutches and a boot for several weeks, then I would have been much more concerned. Yeah, right they, now, I'm not hopefully concerned. Didn't say a single thing. We didn't see him with a boot on. We didn't see him with any. At all, so, ever. Yeah, exactly. So it's not even like a precaution thing. They literally yeah. just, nothing happened. So they're probably. Yeah, like, I think they were just being smart with one of their top players. I mean, yeah, um, listen, they're already going to miss their top offensive player. So they're like, we'll take z- absolutely zero chances. Even if it was the a, a one day tweak, like they were just like, nah, fuck it. Let's shut him down. And the other thing that people are sleeping on, um, and Evan Silva tweeted about this um, earlier today on the recording day, how banged up and bad the Chargers offensive line is. That's they like lost their, Okung every, for at least six weeks with a blood clot. You cannot play well on blood thinners, and he's going to have to be on blood thinners for blood clot. That's a big deal. The rest of their linemen are ranking in the bottom, to, bottom third to bottom half at their position. These guys, they're going to want to throw uh, because they, Rivers is not going to have time. Yeah, I, I see this Chargers team. Again. I see this Chargers team very similar to us, how I see the Saints team. And it's, you know, they're getting older in terms of their veteran mm-hmm. quarterback, right? And they want to keep their quarterback on their, on their feet and they want to get the ball out of their hands quickly. That's why you see the running backs in New Orleans catch so many passes. That's why you see the running backs in uh, LA with the Chargers catch so many passes. And in my opinion, you know, Keenan Allen running a lot from the slot now with Mike Williams on the outside and whatnot. Um, that's good for Eckler. It's good for Keenan Allen. It's good for Hunter Henry, all guys who run shallow intermediate routes. So yeah, it's a good point with the offensive line. It seems like they're banged up every single year entering the season. So no worries with Keenan Allen. Uh, a couple other guys I know we've, we've talked about, so we don't really need to get into depth here that we're not worried about two other elite wide receivers. It's Julio, it's Evans. Julio has missed the entire preseason with a foot injury, but like at this point, it just seems like Julio went in there and was like, hey, I'm going to sit for this preseason. Do you guys care? The front office was like, nah, we don't give a shit. Take your time, sit out. He'll be full go for the regular season. It's this foot issue that you talked about that he basically dealt with the last two years. So there's no concerns there as a high-end wide receiver. One, um, Mike Evans, quad issue, missed most of the preseason, if not all of the preseason. But uh, another player that you said last week when you were on, you're not concerned about. Has anything changed with your concern level on Mike Evans or Julio Jones, either draft-wise or for week one? Nope. I think uh, Julio is still a top five uh, wide receiver. I really love their schedule this year. I think uh, Mike Evans has a chance to shine even more this year in Arians' offense. If you look at the, the, the history of Arians' offenses, they're bananas. They're, they're both their, their offensive production is just crazy. Yep. Uh, not, not concerned about anyone. OBJ, I'm not concerned about his hip. A lot of these top wide receivers have a couple bangs and bruises, but they're just being smart with them as they should. A, a quick thing that just popped up on my phone, uh, you guys will hear about it obviously much uh, after the fact that it already came out, but Amari Cooper returned to practice today, which is Monday, okay. uh, after missing a month of practice. Okay, that's a long time uh, with his plantar fasciitis. So that's good news for week one. Good news. Um, but he needs to make sure it calms down and stays calm down. If he irritates it over the next couple of weeks, which is why I've been a little bullish on him because I just, I don't really trust him. Yeah. Uh, but uh, just to kind of throw that in there, he'll still be very productive, but, but, but that this foot could flare up at any time. Yeah. And it sounds like the whole Zeke thing, you know, yesterday it sounded as if they were about to sign the contract today. Now it's again, they're back to being both sides very far apart this looks messy and it doesn't look like anything's going to get done within the next couple of days. Now I have my draft tonight and thankfully no one in my league is going to see this video until we've already drafted. Amari Cooper is going to be a guy that's probably available in the fourth round for me. It's a 10 team league. So it's smaller and I'll have more opportunities to get better guys, but I don't want to waste an early pick in a league that size on a guy who's, you know, got that high injury risk. Where is like the earliest that you'll be looking at Cooper in, you know, any size league, but just in general, is he someone that like, despite even being back at practice, 
he's kind of off your draft board just because there's other guys around him that you like more. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I like, I, I, I like what he did when he got to Dallas. I like Dak this year. I think Dak has a potentially. That's why if, Zeke, if Zeke's holdout continues, they're going to go a lot more pass heavy. And that's obviously yeah. good for Cooper. It's just like that foot really scares me. I like, I like Gallup. I like, I think Gallup has a, has a strong breakout this year. I mean, not like top 10 strong, but maybe top 25, like, you know, maybe, like a, maybe like a Calvin Ridley last year, yeah. you know, like I mean, uh, 900 yards, eight touchdowns or something. Yeah. And then don't sleep. Uh, obviously we Pollard's in his own kind of class right now, but don't sleep on Randall Cobb. All right. Uh, remember what P- Beasley did last year when he was annoying and caught like random touchdowns and a lot of catches that's Cobb this year. I have a lot of Cobb in best ball. He was like a 17th, 18th round target for me. Yeah. At the time. I was like, I, I know he's not good anymore, but like, if something happens to Cooper, it's just like, a, you know, he's, he's going to catch 50 to 60 passes just because. Yeah. If you look at PFF uh, Scott's um, article on slot wide receivers, yeah, Dak likes throwing to the slot. Like, I think there's only a couple that throw more than him, and it's like Flacco, and then there was a couple more. But, but in general, I would take – so I would take Cooper in more of a best ball league where I don't have to worry about when I'm going to start him. Right. But in a in, in a season long, I I don't trust him enough to to you know is this the week he goes bananas? Is this yeah. the week he does twelve points? I like know? him in theory. Like oh you know what I got like a borderline wide receiver one in the fourth round. But like it's I, I hate the fact that I'm gonna have to actually maneuver around when I want to start him during the week. So that's that's kind of shitty. Yeah. I mean I guess it's good that he returned to practice, but he's not someone. Maybe he's a, a a buy low target if he starts the year off slow or something. But he doesn't. Yeah. Have, you know something like that. Yeah, like, so this morning, I did a best ball this morning. Let me give you an idea of where he went. Far in best ball. I see him drop into, like, a late fourth, maybe even early fifth round. 4-2. He went 4-2. Yeah. Okay, so here's guys around him. Keenan Allen at 3-9. Robert Woods at 4-3. Diggs at 4-4. Godwin at 4-5. Cooks at 4-6. Who would you take uh, over uh, Cooper there? All those guys? I think at this point, I would probably take all of them over Cooper. Because all of those guys – Possibly not Diggs. Diggs might be behind Cooper for me. Uh, I think the rest of the guys are very safe. Like even Robert Woods, you might be like boring, but like Robert Woods last year put up more yards than Cooper does on a yearly basis. You know what I'm saying? So it's like oh, yeah. Woods' is floor, like you can talk about Cooper's ceiling all you want, but he's also been in the in the league for four years already and hasn't hit that hypothetical ceiling. So you really don't know yeah. who Cooper is. He, Cooper might just be Robert Woods. You know what I mean? And and like we're just yeah. foregoing Robert Woods just because Cooper has the draft capital and the supposed talent and things like that. So – um, yeah, Cooper's a guy Cooper that, has top 10 potential. Yeah. But he also could finish 35th. Yes, exactly. And the consistency levels are like the big concern for. Yeah, uh, I mean, for, and uh, you have to pay. He's expensive. You have to, you can't get him in the eighth round or something where you can, you can, he can finish 35th and you'd be okay with it. Yeah, like for you the know? most part, you're going to have to draft Cooper at the end of the third round when you can always get one of those guys somewhere in the fourth round. Like one of those five guys, you'll be able to get the 403, the 406, the 409, or something like that. So it's like, why reach up a round to get a guy that's going to produce like those guys or be less consistent? So probably off the Cooper train. Let's talk about two more wide receivers, the Finger Brothers, guys who broke their fingers recently. Before we do that, though, uh, I want to give a quick plug because we do a lot of free content, obviously, throughout the year. We, you will be getting four or five videos from myself as well as Dr. Morse on the Fancy Doctors YouTube channel, which we will link below. But we also do a lot of exclusive content. It's a way for you guys to support us as creators. Of course, we put a lot of hard work and effort into the videos and the research and the analysis that we do. So um, signing up for our Patreon pages is one way to not only support, but you'll get a lot of value from that. So uh, Dr. Morse. Why don't you tell them where they can find you on Patreon, the URL, and what exactly they get from your package in season. Yeah, so um, we are on patreon.com uh, slash the fantasy doctors. Very easy to find. If you're on my Twitter, just click on the link and it will go, I believe it's right to it. A couple different packages, uh, 10 bucks a month, 20, and then there's like a $50 one. If you uh, want updated weekly injury reports, full realistic timelines, individual player analysis, video-wise uh, for injuries. Um, if you want questions, if, if you want me to analyze your lineups, uh, is this guy better than that guy? Uh, when 
50 people send me their lineup, I don't have time to do that. But if you're a Patreon member, you get premium. You, you, you'll, you'll, they will get answered before, yeah, you know. Exactly. You and and know. just one more thing, like, like I said, you're going to be coming on my channel every Thursday, but we're not going to have time to break down every single player who suffered an injury. If you want the breakdowns of, you know, any relevant player or to be able to specifically ask Dr. Morse about what a player that, oh, a player that he thinks about, you know, that might not be covered in my videos, that's where you would go. I mean, obviously, you know, he'll do his best to, um, answer you on social media, whether that's on Twitter or YouTube or whatever. But Patreon is where I'm sure they're going to be dedicating a lot of their time because those are the people that support him. And he wants to be there to support y'all for that. Yeah. I mean, I, I get it. I got a direct email this morning from one of the people asking a question and I went on in 15 minutes and answered it. Boom. Done. There you go. So sign up patreon.com slash the fancy doctors. I will link that down below. We also have a Patreon page where you will get uh, weekly private live streams, our weekly rankings, you will get uh, the waiver wire article. I will not be doing a waiver wire video. That will only be an exclusive article on Patreon. And of course, like their Patreon pages, there will be a private access uh, accessible forum where myself, Noah, Snacks or Animal will be answering your questions all the time. So if you need any in-season content, exclusive content from either of us, that is where you should go. Let's talk about these wide receivers who keep breaking their fingers. We have two opposite players. One very consistent player in Julian Edelman. One very inconsistent, but big playmaker in Deshaun Jackson. Now, Julian Edelman suffered this broken thumb, I want to say, three or four weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, he was all ready to go for the first week of the season. Then they decided to play him in week four. <laughs> Comes up, yeah, like Bill Belichick. I don't, I'm not going to question it, but I'm going to fucking question it. He so plays, why is he well, playing? I, I, one year half playing, Burn Blair is playing in week four. Right? Is, he, is he like a rookie that needs to make the squad? They put him back on the field. He comes up after a play, you know, holding his thumb that he broke and he walks off and he's done for the game. Now, supposedly this is not a serious injury and he's still ready to go for week one. Probably the case. Do you think this affects Edelman? Have you heard anything out of the ordinary or is this something that's just like, you know, someone tweeted about it and it got blown up bigger than it should be? No, he definitely landed on it. I watched the the, the, the review. It, it I want to say it was a different part and it didn't. Uh, it, it kind of stunned him a little bit, but it wasn't overly concerning. The beat writers in New England, there's several of them that are, are good to follow. And they're usually, I mean, New England keeps injury stuff on wraps, like really, really wraps. But it sounds like he got lucky and he did okay. I still have him in my top 25. That's a big right? drop off though. I feel like a lot of people have him in their, you know, 12 to 14 range. With, between Josh Gordon, between uh, James White, between Sonny Michelle, between, you know, Dorsett's there. There's a lot of weapons more weapons than we're used to, so to speak. I mean, I know Gronk's gone, no, but... It's not necessarily an injury concern. It's just like the, you're a little bit down on the overall outlook of Edelman compared to the industry. I mean, I, I, I currently have him 14th, but that's the assumption he gets 140 targets. So that's you have him 14th. Targets. You don't have him 25. You have him 14, you're saying. Correct, yes. Okay. But, but I mean, if everything breaks right, could he be a top 10? Yes. Yeah. Could he also, you know... I mean, mind you, think about it. Last year... He finished as a PPR wide receiver 20, and he missed four games. Yeah. That's, that's impressive, you know, and, 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 and that was with White. That was with White who finished in, what, number RB7 or what it was in PPR. So, like, they throw the ball a ton, but they also run a ton. They just run a lot of plays, and, they're you know, they want to score points. They don't want to run the clock out and call, you know, finish the game. Yeah. So, he's going to get the ball. I'm not worried about his thumb. Okay, cool. Um, quick, easy. Deshaun Jackson is a guy – that I saw differing reports from. Supposedly he broke his left ring finger, I believe. Now, originally they were like, it's not a big deal. He'll be ready for week one. Then I think I saw Stefania Bell tweet something out where this was like a three to four week injury healing process. I don't know. My concern with a guy like Deshaun Jackson is, it, I mean, it, it concerns me for the overall standpoint of this entire offense because he spreads the entire defense out if he misses time or something happens. I don't know if that's, that's the case. The other concern for me when it comes to Deshaun Jackson is, He's a big playmaker down the field guy who is not going to get Julian Edelman type targets. He's not getting eight to 10 targets a game. He's getting five, four, maybe even three targets a game in this offense with all these mouths to feed there. So if this finger happens to hamper him for even one or two targets, that's 50, 40, 30% of the targets that he's getting in a game. If he drops a 40 yard pass because of his finger or something, that's probably the only reason you had him in your fantasy lineup to begin with. So when I think of the ring finger, I mean, I'm just thinking of it like, it's probably not that hard to still catch a ball with one ring finger kind of like splinted up if there's protection on it. Is your take um, that he's fine, he's good to go for week one, or, or should we be a little bit nervous about him, about Carson Wentz now, if the offense is going to get pulled back a little bit? So, yes, he 
reportedly fractured his left ring finger. We don't know where. All we know is that he doesn't need surgery, which is usually a good sign. Yeah. That likely means he did not tear any tendons. That also likely means it was not a spiral fracture, uh, which is just what it sounds like. The good news is that these heal in about four weeks. He will probably not be 100% for a good two weeks. Um, he's going to probably try to wear a splint or a, a little uh, – it's basically a splint that they make. The problem is if he is a guy who wears gloves, which I'm assuming he is because most of these guys are, you can't wear both. You, you can't fit the splint over the uh, gloves or under the gloves. So um, he either have to, he's going to have to tape it up or he's going to have to deal with it. Like, the, you, you know, he's obviously – they're not going to put a screw in it just for the game. Like, they're not going to – they don't do that. So he's kind of limited by that. He, he may be okay, but there's a lot of mouths to feed in this offense. I mean, you've got to remember that even Aguilar is still there. You know, Djax is there. Alshon Jeffrey's there. Arcia Whiteside could be a monster. We saw what he did a couple of weeks ago. You still have a ton of running backs. You, I didn't even mention Ertz or Godert yet. So if he's only getting four or five targets, I mean, one or two of those may be deep balls and that may be two touchdowns. I mean, that's possible. But right. I don't think he's going to have the same potential because of how many mouths there are to feed in Philly that he did have in 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 Tampa Bay because there was less mouse to feed there. With that being said, would I play him in Week One? Probably not. Maybe on like a, a Millie Maker or something like that. Yeah. But I'm not starting him in like a, one of my regular teams. If he's a wide receiver three or a flex, I can argue that. But they're playing Washington. That is a very vulnerable team, and I expect Philly to destroy them. He's definitely not in my top twenty for Week One. I'll tell you that. Okay, so the injury. Doesn't he's he's definitely not going to miss time. The injury probably shouldn't hold him back from just the pure, you know, being on the field, talent, fantasy points perspective. It's more of just the Eagles offense overall that makes you nervous about him. Correct. Yes, I, I'm more concerned about the Eagles offense in terms of being, you know, spread so, so variable and so many different options. Okay. Uh, they may try to stress the field once or twice with him, but he, this is not a guy he's going to get 10 or 12 targets, like you said. So, uh, when he catches the ball or gets targeted, he has to make it count. Exactly. Um, yeah, that, that's the concern I have for, I mean, not only the finger, but I mean, that's how he's played his whole career and he's been fine, but just one or two drops, you know, is really a hit to who he is as a, as a player because he ain't going to get too many of them. Let's move on to the final player on our list. And that is the most popular quarterback ask by the audience. And it's Cam Newton. Seems like the shoulder is 100%. Looks like we are kind of over that whole ordeal, or at least, you know, 90, 95%. He's throwing the deep ball well in preseason. Then he goes and injures the foot. And this scared everybody, right? Because if you're drafting Cam Newton, you ain't doing it for the shoulder to begin with. You're doing it for his legs and the fact that he has a 14 rushing touchdown season on his resume. Like, that's the kind of upside you draft this guy for. The foot hampering him, obviously, is a major concern. And now I'm seeing him drop back in drafts. He returned back to practice, I believe it was this, maybe last weekend, um, or possibly this weekend, I forget what the report actually said, but he is back at practice. Now, do you think that is, based on what you know about the injury, do you think that's just like them reporting that he's back at practice, or do you think he will be fine, ready to go for week one? Should we be concerned? Because Cam's going to be someone I'm looking at. I'm, I'm drafting a super flex draft tonight, and I'm, I'm assuming that I will have to pay somewhat of a premium price for him, but I'm not going to do that if there's any nervousness around that foot injury. I am cautiously optimistic with Cam. Okay. He returned to practice on Sunday, yesterday, and they have been really not concerned about this injury all week. So, or, you know, since it happened, which is good news, very good news. They're going to need to put up points in week one versus the Rams. We know the Rams are going to score some points. Good fantasy matchup. Yep. Assuming... Aaron Donald doesn't take off his head. They're going to keep the camp's probably not going to try to run much, at least in week one or first couple of weeks, which is okay. Uh, he's got CMC. He's got more. He's got Samuel who I really like. And even Olsen is healthy right now. I'm not overly concerned about him this week, but he is at high re-injury risk. And that's all I'll say. I still think he's in the QB nine to 13 range somewhere yeah. around there he's got high upside but he's also you know he's also not a top five guy in my opinion anymore uh, but he's a higher floor than most yeah I mean he's bruised and battered he's been hurt so many times over the last x number of years 
I do. I feel like C-Mac's probably set up to catch 12 balls in this first game. I feel like the, every single play is going to be Donald rushes, Cam dumps off. Donald yep. rushes, Cam dumps off to C-Mac. Yeah, it's going to be – it's going to be fucking rinse, repeat. And like you said, the Rams are going to throw up. It's not like this Carolina defense is what it was a couple of years ago. So the Rams are going to put up their 30-plus points. Cam's going to have to come back miraculously, and we'll see what happens. C-Mac's probably a good bet to go over like 170 yards on scrimmage that week one. So he might be my my uh, my top RB play in this first week. But y'all will have to go get my rankings on Patreon in order to find that out. I think that's all the injuries that we had on tap for today in week one, correct, Doc? Yeah, uh, I want to add one more that uh, has been kind of lingering and that no one's really talking about until yesterday or last night it came up. Trey Burton is not practicing. Yes. He has not returned. He's had the sports he running injury, right? Sports Sur- running surgery in the offseason. Uh, this is actually quite common. Uh, we just seen uh, Kareem Hunt suffer this injury a couple days ago, and he is having surgery, and he will be back probably in week eight or we you know when he's eligible, but he'll be ready to go in week eight or so. Who else had this surgery? There was one more. I just drew a blank, but this is very common surgery. Most guys, oh, Devonta Freeman had it. Most guys do well with it. Obviously. Is he dealing, is he dealing with something else that's keeping him out? I don't know. We don't know. All we know is that he's unlikely for week one. He's not really a high, uh, he's kind of like if you scrambled at the end of your draft for a tight end, this is probably who you'd pick up, but he's unexciting. Shaheen may be able to go, may not, and he's got a back injury. So that's basically both of the Bears as tight ends uh, that you'd consider uh, playing or starting. So we will know more if they tell us if it's his groin or if it's something else he's dealing with uh, and the groin's fine. I expect it to be fine, but it should be several months post-op right now, and I don't know why he's not on the field. So Yeah, the fact that he's not even on the field yet tells you that he's probably far off from being NFL game speed ready. And Burton was a guy that um, he had been on my do-not-draft list since the beginning of the, the, beginning of the offseason. Just from a pure opportunistic and like talent standpoint, I think Shaheen coming back kills this guy because Shaheen is the red zone tight end. He is like the big athletic basketball player, and I think – um, if he's on the field, if both of them are on the field together, Shaheen's going to be the one that's getting those those end zone targets. So I see Trey Burton, like his over under for touchdowns might be three and a half this year. And if you're a tight end scoring three touchdowns, that ain't going to cut it because you're not Travis Kelsey, you're not that guy. So so I'm off Burton. Yeah, the injury news for Burton is is just kind of pushes him back to like tight end. I don't know, 18 for me at this point. If he's even on the field in the first month of the season, we'll have to see. But thank you for throwing that in there. That will wrap up today's episode. Again, every Thursday, Doc will be on the channel. So make sure you tweet at us. You drop some comments down below on which players you are most interested in knowing about. They will cover the majority of the injured players throughout the week on their Patreon page. You can find my weekly rankings as well as other exclusive stuff on our Patreon page. I just suggest subscribing to all of our Patreon pages. Make sure everybody's eating. Make sure everybody is bringing home the chip this year. 2019 Fantasy Football. That's all we got for you today. Thanks for joining us today, Doc. Hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Subscribe to their YouTube channel. All that shit I just said will be linked in the description because I know it was a lot. I love y'all. Thank you for sticking around this long if you did. And uh, until next time, peace.